Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about 10 romance books that have adorable, memorable pets in them. I love romance books that have like pets in them. I think they're so cute, and they add just like a fun, relatable, like element to romance stories. And even the pets sometimes are very meddlesome in some way and it kind of forces the couple to be together and I just love stories like these and I needed to share these books with y'all. I have a previous romance rec video with this trope. I'm gonna leave it down below in case you have not watched that yet with 10 more recommendations. I'm so excited to talk about these books. We have contemporary romances, historicals, alien, even a fantasy one. Like I'm so excited to talk about these books. An author that does this trope very well that adds amazing pets into her romances is Chloe Lisa. Like almost every single one of her books has an adorable, very essential pet. Like it's not just like someone throwing a pet in their story to like add another element to it. Like no, these pets are fantastic in all of her books. This is the fourth book in the Bourbon Brothers series, by the way. This one is the romance between Axel and Rooney. And you can even see on the cover, the two pets in question are on the cover here. So Rooney in here is the best friend to the heroine Willa from book one in this series and Rooney is going through a lot health wise and mental health wise as well as just with her job and she needs a break from her big lawyer job. So Willa, her best friend, ends up offering the cabin that um, the Bergman family owns that no one's staying in currently. She's like, hey, no one's staying there right now. How about you go take a little bit of vacation, have some alone time, regroup, like just spend some time in this cabin. But then when Rooney gets there, she realizes that Axel, one of the Bergman brothers, is already at the cabin and he is actually renovating it. He's doing it secretly. He doesn't want his family to know, but the cabin is kind of falling apart and his family would never like let him pay for all the renovations, um, but he decided that's what he's gonna do. Axel actually already owns another cabin very close to the main one. And when Ro Rooney shows up, he's like, okay, you can't really stay here um, cause it's like dangerous to stay in this cabin. So how about you just come stay in mine? and it'll be fine. Then things happen to a point where they have to get in a marriage of convenience in order to get an inheritance of some sort and the two of them fall in love. They've already been pining after each other before this point and it just becomes like explosive in here. I adore this romance. This book has amazing ulcerative colitis representation. By the way, also Rooney has ulcerative colitis. She also eats like gluten-free, which I really related to being someone who eats gluten-free. So I love their representation in here, but we're here to talk about pets, okay? So the two pets in question here. So Axel has this dog. He was kind of a stray that kind of adopted Axel. <laughs> him he ran into Axel one day and he just won't leave him alone I think if I remember correctly um he doesn't have a name Rooney names him Harry Styles <laughs> like it's really cute it's really funny and then the cat on the cover I can't remember the cat's name for the life of me however the whole scene in this book of Rooney finding this cat is everything to me it lives in my head rent free all of the time so um Rooney, like myself, we have tummy issues and when you gotta go, you gotta go, okay? It just happens that Rooney's driving in the middle of nowhere and um, she has to pull off the side of the road and do business. And while she's doing said business, she ends up <laughs> finding this kitten like abandoned on the side of the road. And so she decides to bring it home and Axel asks her like, oh, where'd you find this cat? And she's so embarrassed. She will not tell him how she found this cat. Like she can't tell him that she found the cat. But she was doing something on the side of the road. I love this one so much. And the pets just added a whole, whole fantastic element to this book. Next, I have Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Stone. I have not talked about this book in so long. That is such a shame. I love this romance. This is the romance between Sebastian and Via. It's also an age gap single dad romance. I feel like some people are afraid to read romances with covers like these, with like real people on the cover, you know, that look like sweet and innocent. This is not a sweet and innocent romance. I will tell you that. <laughs> This is a good age gap single dad romance, okay? So when Via was a kindergarten teacher a few years ago, she had this one student who she could tell is going through a lot. And so she decides to have a parent teacher conference and it's with Sebastian who is the hero of this book. He's going through a lot of rough things. He is trying to figure out how to be a single father for the first time in his life because his wife recently died and he didn't really have the best relationship with his wife. And his wife was the person who mainly took care of their son. And after Via and him have a parent teacher conference of him telling, of her telling him like, your son needs more attention. He needs more care. Like, I don't even think he like brushed his hair this morning or brushed his teeth. Like he, he needs more care. Like, and this was a huge 
wake up call for Sebastian. He's like, I need to change my life around. This has to happen. And so it's years later. Sebastian is now like the best father you could ever imagine. He is there for his son in every way possible. He even like volunteers as much as possible at the school itself. And so now uh, Via goes to a different school who happens to be, which just so happens to be the same school that the son goes to now as well. His son changed schools and she is now the school counselor. And Via and Sebastian end up bumping into each other again and again and again while he's volunteering at this school. And they end up falling for each other, even though Sebastian kind of like holds himself back because I believe he's in his uh, 40s or late 30s. And he's like, I cannot ask this woman out. Like she is in her early 20s. Like she should be experiencing what people in their early 20s like to do, like go out and party, have freedom. She does not want to be with a single dad and stuck with a son. Like that's not what she wants. When in actuality, that's absolutely what Via wants. Via does not finds the typical 20 year old lifestyle to be what she is into and she is totally wanting Sebastian and their little family. As you can see on the cover there is a dog on here. I can't remember the dog's name but the dog in here is so cute as I want to leave you with because I can't say anything else but he is so cute. I love this romance. This age gap romance is everything. I love it and more people need to read it. The next dog one is Archer's voice by Mia Sheridan. This is a romance between um Brie I think her name's Brie and Archer so if you have not read about Archer's voice yet that needs to change. Anyway so um Brie in here decides to move to this very small town and she ends up bumping into the town recluse Archer. He is kind of ostracized by the town because he is different from all of them. He was in an accident when he was younger. His parents ended up dying and then he suffered a vocal cord injury where he's not able to speak anymore. Um, but then one day she is on a, I think, bike ride or a walk with her dog named Phoebe and the dog kind of goes haywire and just runs into the woods. She's like, what is going on? And chases after the dog. The dog ends up bringing her to Archer's house and they end up bumping into each other again because they previously bumped into each other at the grocery store he wasn't the nicest but he's like a town grump okay um and then uh the dog ends up bringing her to his house she's like what is going on how come i keep running into this man anyway she decides that she wants to be friends with archer and she actually knows sign language herself and that's how archer communicates and they become friends and it turns into something more Bree ends up being archer's like first ever friend and he doesn't really know how to be a friend. Brie, Brie shows him the way, okay? Um, Phoebe in here is super cute and there's even a point where like, Brie thinks that like Phoebe has completely betrayed her because Phoebe is obsessed with um, Archer in this book. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. And if you have not read this contemporary romance, you totally need to. For a fantasy romance, I have A Touch of Stone and Snow by Neela Vane. This is the romance between Arax and Lizzin. So they have always been best friends with each other. They grew up being best friends. And they also always knew that this is their forever person. Ever since they were kids, they're like, we're gonna grow up, we're gonna get married, we are meant for each other. They've always saved themselves for this person like this is their person. Then Lizzin is off in a battle and she ends up being the only survivor of the battle. And I think she gets this giant scar on her face. And in this fantasy realm, if you're scarred like this in that particular area, that means that you are a traitor or you did something horrible to the gods, that the gods basically like, smited you. And so they see this as a sign and they cast her out of their village. Arax is absolutely devastated. He is now sent on a mission to go do something and he thinks that Lizen can help him. So he goes to track her down so they can complete this mission together. There's obviously more to this, but this is a great fantasy romance series. I love this one. It's amazing friends to lovers. Like I adore with this couple so much. If you love Friends to Lovers, you need to pick this romance up. Even if you don't like Friends to Lovers, like I feel like this one could change your mind, okay? The pet in here is Avrax's pet. She is a giant snow leopard. She is so cute in here, but deadly, ferocious, deadly, but I loved her, okay? The snow leopard is Avrax's other best friend and they do everything together. And she also loves Lizzin as well. Like this snow leopard is everything and I, loved her. I want to mention two Ruby Dixon books. <laughs> there are a bunch of Ruby Dixon books that have like pets in them and they're all alien animals which is so cool to me. Um, So let's do Lawrence Barbarian first. This is the first book in the Ice Home series. If you want to know the correct order in which to read the Ice Planet Barbarian series and the Ice Home series because they're an interconnected series that you read in tandem basically. I'll link down below my guide to Ice Planet Barbarians where um, you figure out when you should read this book in the order 
you know? Anyway, um, so Lauren in here is a human woman who has been illegally taken from Earth, obviously, by some evil aliens, and the spaceship that they were on ends up crashing on to the planet that this series, these two series take place on, which is deemed not Hoth. <laughs> Anyway, this book is very unique because we have a new book in this universe series that does not take place on the ice world, like the ice area of this world. Lauren's space pod ends up coming onto shore onto this tropical island. There she ends up meeting Cathar. He is a Sukui male who um, has four arms. <laughs> Anyway, um, he ends up saving her from this pod and then realizes that um, this is his mate. Like his Kui starts going. If you don't know what the IPB series, you don't know what a Kui is. But it's like a symbiote put in these aliens' bodies that tells them when their like, lifelong mate and partner like is with them. So he realizes that Lauren is his mate. There's a huge language barrier. However, she does not know that like resonance is a thing. She doesn't know about fate of mates or anything. And so um, she is shocked when like Cathar shows up and then he decides to like take her as his and they end up flying for each other despite the language barrier. So there is a pet in here and it's like an alien bird of some sort. Um, and Lauren used to have like pet birds back on earth. And this one bird is um, like at first Cathar's pet, um, but then it just like totally falls in love with Lauren and like perches on her shoulder all the time. Time and just like it's with them all the time like I think it's same as Kakiri or something like that but it's really cute one of my favorite alien romances with pets is when she belongs to Ruby Dixon this is my favorite Ruby Dixon book okay people need to read it <laughs> this is a grumpy sunshine romance between Sophie and Jurok so Sophie was taken from earth she was a human illegally taken from earth like many of these Ruby Dixon books she ends up getting saved by this uh and of course their brother pirates um but they have to go on a dangerous mission and they're like okay sophie um we can't keep you on the ship because we're about to go do something dangerous how would you go stay with our friend jurok on this abandoned asteroid and like he'll take care of you whatever so she has to go stay with jurok on this abandoned asteroid and he is the biggest grump of all grumps and sophie is not having it she's like um i'm not dealing with your crap like we're we're gonna do all this stuff like they have to go on a few missions themselves so the corsair brothers that she was with before she was put on jerk's asteroid they ended up also saving this alien animal called a karenu there's a few karenus in like ruby verse and i just love the karenu they are like giant cat slash reptile animals and they only like women <laughs> they only like women if they become like close to a man like an alien man in any way, like you gonna die. <laughs> like they are totally obsessed with women. And so this Karenu that they saved um, ends up like forming this bond to Sophie. And so wherever Sophie goes, the Karenu goes. There's another Karenu that's introduced into the Ruby verse and that's a female Karenu. And then the two of them become, get together. And it's so cute. These Karenus are so sweet. I then have four historicals to mention. The first is A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. This is the romance between Christina and Oliver. And the dog in this part like holds like a pivotal role to their relationship because they, this is how, the dog is how the two of them end up meeting. So Christina does not have the best home life, okay, because her parents are not good people. Um, Her family really wants uh, some more money and so they decide that she's gonna marry someone rich no matter how old or gross or bad this person is. And so they go and move to America and hopes to find a husband for her that's very wealthy. They decide she's gonna marry this old, gross man. And Christina is not happy about this at all. Um, but Christina is having to stay at her aunt's home while they're trying to figure out the deal of them getting married or whatever. And um, she is not great in social situations. She does not like crowds. And so she takes a lot of breaks and escapes from her aunt's home by taking a walk in the gardens next door. And that just so happens to be Oliver's gardens. There's this dog on the estates that little, that like spooks uh, Christina a little bit. Oliver comes in, he's like, what are you doing on my land? Like, what are you doing with my dog? Like what is going on? Oliver is the big grumpy hero. He is actually uh, deaf and he's an inventor of sorts. He's trying to um, invent the first ever kind of like hearing aid, I think. Um, and so that was a really cool aspect of this book. But the dog in here plays like a pivotal role to their romance because he's the one that introduces the two of them basically, kind of like leads Christina to 
Oliver in his workshop. By some happenstance, the two of them have to get an American convenience to help save Christina and the rest goes from there. This was such a great romance. I love this one. It's one of my favorite historical romances. Next I have Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number five in the Hathaway series. I absolutely love the Hathaway series. So this is like a, a familial series. So each book in the series is about a different family member. So this is the romance between Beatrix and Christopher. Since this is the last book of the series, you've read about Beatrix throughout the rest of the series. And she is, I believe, the youngest sibling if I'm not mistaken but you see her throughout the series get into a lot of shenanigans with pets she owns a lot of pets she takes care of them helps them get back into their health she's a home to a lot of pets she loves them so that's like a main part of Beatrix's life anyway so Beatrix has this friend named Prudence and Prudence has been in correspondence with this guy named Christopher who is from their town and she's been writing letters to him but she's kind of bored She's like, I don't really feel like writing to him anymore. And so Beatrix decides to write in Prudence's stead. So she decides to just like keep writing as like herself. Like she's writing letters about her, but she just signs Prudence's name at the bottom because she's like, this guy um, is probably going through a lot at war and this might be like a comfort or solace to him. So I'm just gonna keep writing to him. They end up kind of like falling for each other over letters and Christopher does not know that this is Beatrix and not Prudence. And uh, the reason why Beatrix does not say that it's her is because uh, she knows that Christopher does not like her. Like growing up when they were kids, like he found her to be very annoying, would say not the greatest things about Beatrix. And so she's never revealed herself. Um, but now the war is over and Christopher is back home and really wanting to get to know Prudence in person to hopefully ask for her hand in marriage. Then when he like gets to know her and like talks to her in person, he's like, this is not the woman I wrote letters to. Like what is going on? So he's trying to figure out who the real woman is that he has been talking to. I love this one. This is a great historical romance and the pets are just like an added element in here. And they also add like a little bit of a meddlesomeness to the two characters hanging out with each other. Next I have Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare. This is the romance between Cleo and Rafe. This is kind of forbidden because Rafe is the brother to Cleo's intended. So Cleo in here, she ends up inheriting a castle um, from her late godfather. She kind of sees this as a wake up call because she's been engaged to this guy named Piers for like over eight years and he's never called it up. You know, like he's never been like, okay, it's time to get married now. And all the eight years, like he's never ever been like okay it's time to marry my my fiance now and so she's sick of this he hasn't even tried to get to know her or tried to marry her at all here's is a way off at war or something along those lines and so she has no direct contact with him so she goes to his brother named Rafe and is like hey I'm calling things off with your brother it's fine whatever I don't love him Rafe is like no no, no you're gonna bury my brother it's gonna happen look I'm gonna make sure that this happens and so he tries in every way possible to get Cleo to marry his brother for reasons he has his reasons for wanting Cleo to marry his brother and then in reality Rafe is actually like totally obsessed with and in love with Rafe has been taking care of his brother's peers his dog I think it's a bulldog and he is so stinking cute okay there's a scene in here when he gets a little hurt so just be aware of that but the dog part in here was so stinking cute and just like her relationship with the dog too I love it and then there's also points where um Cleo is telling like <laughs> Rafe like you love this dog just by the way like I can tell like you're in love with this dog don't deny it. he's like I don't like the dog like the dog isn't mine whatever and like Rafe like cares for him so well and Cleo's just like you're in love with the dog. You don't have to say it. I already know it. <laughs> and the last one that I'd love to mention is another Tessa Dare book. This is One Dance with the Duke. This is the romance between Amelia and Spencer. And all I want to tell you is that this has to deal with horses. So if you really like horses, I really recommend this book. This was an okay Tessa Dare for me because this is one of her earlier works that I'm not that big of a fan of. However, I did want to mention this one really fast because you don't get a lot of horses in romances. So if you like horses, I would recommend this one. But this one is very enemies to lovers, marriage of convenience romance that I enjoyed, but it just wasn't my favorite. However, the horses part in this series, I think like it's a whole series about horses very cool. Anyway, so there you have it. Those are 10 romances with pets in them. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, that's okay. You can leave me any animal emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.